Hi, welcome to my channel EZML. In the previous set of videos, we looked at the theory behind dimension reduction, more specifically the principal component analysis that is also called PCA. In this video, we will see how PCA can be executed on the IRIS dataset. First, let us install the relevant packages that are a prerequisite to principal component analysis. So, install.packages stats install.packages dplyr well, so the stats package here has functions that can help execute principal component analysis whilst the dplyr package well that helps predominantly with data manipulation note i will not be running these lines of code since i have already installed these packages now let us use the library function to access the contents of these packages so library stats library dplyr and then I'll just select and quickly run well now you can see that the libraries of these packages have been successfully loaded now let us go ahead and briefly inspect the iris dataset using the view function so view iris and then control enter well now the iris dataset has appeared as a tab here as you all know by now there are five columns in the iris dataset namely sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and species since dimension reduction that is pca is a branch of unsupervised learning we need unlabeled data that is we need to ignore the last column being species for a refresher on unsupervised learning please click on the link provided below so now we select all the columns except for species and store it in an object called my data let me go ahead and create the my data object my data is equal to i am selecting from the iris data set the first four columns so one two comma three comma four and then control enter well now you can see that the my data object is now created in the environment tab it has 150 observations and four variables we have ignored the fifth column or variable being species now if you can recall one of the main aims of pca is to transform or combine linearly correlated variables into a set of new variables that are called principal components therefore one of the main prerequisites of pca is to check whether the variables in in a particular data set are highly correlated amongst one another or in other words we need to check whether they are linearly dependent or not the correlation matrix can help check whether or not the variables are highly correlated amongst one another if the average correlation is above 0 0.3 or below minus 0 0.3 we can say that there is evidence or proof that the variables are highly correlated amongst one another and are hence eligible for principal component analysis now let us use the core function to build the correlation matrix so i'll go ahead and build the correlation matrix on the my data object core my data and then control enter now let me use the mean function to find out the average correlation amongst these variables so i'm just going to use mean of the correlation of my data my data okay and then control enter well the average correlation amongst the variables in the iris data set happens to be approximately 0 0.47 which is pretty high Hence, the variables within this iris data set are eligible for principal component analysis. Now, let us go ahead and build principal components. I will use the printcom function to execute PCA on the my data object and store the results in an object called PCA. So, I am going ahead and creating an object called PCA. I will use the printcom function. Printcom function on the my data object done and i've stored it in an object called pca control enter well 
Now you can see that the object PCA is created and we have successfully executed principal component analysis. Now uh, we, can, we can also see in the environment tab that the PCA object is now created. Now let us go ahead and evaluate the results of the principal component analysis we have just executed. Well, if you can recall in the previous set of videos, when we looked at the theory behind PCA, I had mentioned that there are two ways to evaluate PCA. One is to check whether the principal components are capturing the essence of the original variables and the other is to check whether the principal components are independent or not. So, the loading matrix will help us evaluate how the principal components capture the essence of the original variables. It will also help us check how the original variables are loaded into these new principal components. To understand more about the loading matrix, please click on the link provided below. Now let me just go ahead and in the, within the PCA object, I'm going to use the dollar sign to inspect the contents within that object. I'm going to select loading and then control enter. Here we have the loading matrix. Now you can see here in the console, we have just where the loading matrix is there. There are four components. Here you can see there is component one. Then you can see that there is component two. Then you can see that there is component three. And then you can see lastly, there is component four. This is because there are four variables in the original data set. That is sepal length. Here then sepal width, you have petal length and then lastly petal width. So if you can recall, the number of principal components built will always be equal to the number of variables. Now let us take a look at the second principal component, that is component 2 in a little more detail. If you can observe carefully, it has a high correlation with sepal length and sepal width. So if you look at the correlation with sepal length, it has a correlation of approximately minus 0 0.657. And if you look at the uh, how component 2 is correlated with sepal width, once again, sepal width, with, the, with component 2, the correlation with sepal width happens to be minus 0 0.73. So this essentially means that component 2 captures the essence of two variables from the original data set that is sepal length and sepal width. Therefore, instead of using sepal length and sepal width, I can just use component 2 since it captures the essence of the aforementioned variables. Now, let us move on to the next way to evaluate principal component analysis. We will build the correlation matrix on the principal components to check whether they are independent or not. If they are independent, then the correlation amongst these components must be zero or must be nearly zero. First, let us load the principal components in an object called PC. So I'm going to create an object called PC and then from the object PCA, I'm going to use the dollar sign to select the scores. Okay, I'm selecting the scores and then control enter. So I have all the PCs now. So let, let me use the view function to briefly inspect the principal components. So view PC, control enter. Now PC is appeared as a tab here. So you can see in the PC tab, there are essentially four principal components. Now I will use the cor function to check the correlation amongst these four principal components. So let me just go ahead, COR, PC, and then control enter. Well, now here in the console, you can see that the correlation amongst the principal components is almost zero. You can see here, right, you see when component one, how is it correlated with component two? It is e to the power minus 16, that is 0 0.0016 times, that is as good as zero. And then if you see how component three is correlated with component one, it's again 0 0.000, that is 16 times and then uh, and then you see component 4, uh, it's e to the power minus 15. Again, so essentially all these uh, components have, are, are uncorrelated. Essentially, it's as good as 0, if you can see here. So we can conclude, we can very safely conclude that these principal components that have just been built are independent. So this is how we evaluate PCA. And this brings us to the end of PCA. Thank you.